ChatGPT just released one of its most important updates of all time, the ability to reference all your previous chat so it could give you personalized responses. This is a whole new way that is going to give ChatGPT memory and make it a whole lot more practical. Okay, I'm gonna show you exactly how this works with some prompts that you could use for yourself too. But the biggest benefit here is because it could have reference to all your old chats, on top of the old memory that it used to have, which I'll show you that too, you have more controls there, you don't need to repeat yourself as much. The previous memory was very limited, and now this is a whole different way, kind of an infinite way to reference the old chats based on your old chat history. Now, as I'm recording this video, this option got released in my Pro and Plus account, but it's not inside of the ChatGPT Teams account, which I actually use more often. That's gonna take another couple of weeks, it looks like. And hopefully at some point it comes to the free accounts. I'm sure they will have some version of it in the free account. But to get started here, I'm just gonna say, what do you remember about me? And then I'll show you the old memory versus the new one and how it combines the two, because there is a whole new thing called reference memory now. Now this is the best way to get started. What do you remember about me? And then read through what it remembers about you. And if you get something wrong, just simply say, forget this part of it. Okay, right here, it remembered something about my target audience for Skill Leap, and this is kind of not true. So I'm gonna say, forget this. And you could ask it to forget anything that it remembers about you, so it cleans up its own memory. There's another function inside of the settings that I'll show you here in a second. If you go to the settings menu right here, now, if you go to the personalization tab here, under memory, you'll see two different sections. So reference saved memory, this is kind of the old memory that it used to have. Mine was constantly full. That's when you chat with ChatGPT, it would on its own choose to remember something about you, or you could say, remember this about me. And then the memory would get full and then you would have to manage the memory, which I'll show you that too. And this still has limitation on how much it could save. Reference chat history, this is kind of the big thing right now. Let's chat GPT reference all your previous conversations when responding, and there is no limit to this. This is not really like a notepad with a limitation in the context that it will store. This is incredible right here. So both of them are turned on by default as soon as I got access. And there's an FAQ page here, and there's some things that I wanna point out in a second, but I wanna start with a couple of different prompts so you see it in action. Under manage memory, if you go to this tab right here. Now here's the saved memory option. And we've had this for quite a while where you could delete all saved memories or just press the trash can to delete any individual memory. And you could ask ChatGPT to remember something specifically about you. And as long as you had space, it would save it here. But a lot of times it saves things that kind of don't make sense. Request a compilation brain teaser puzzle to solve once a week in the evening. Well, I don't really need it to remember that about me, so I'm gonna go ahead and forget that, right? So you could do that inside a chat, you could do that here. So that is the old reference saved memories that we still have. Now this one is still very useful. I asked ChatGPT to remember things about me, but you do have to manually manage it all the time. Mine gets full all the time inside of my regular Teams account here. But this one is what I'm really excited about. Let me show you some prompting now. Now this is the prompt that ChatGPT gives you. That is also a good starter prompt. Describe me based on all our chats. So now it's using the reference, the chat memory, instead of that other memory. So there's two different things to kind of keep track of. And I said, make it catchy. You're a sharp, no fluff founder with an camera eye and growth brain. You run Skill Leap AI like a boss, merging education with strategy. Okay, it's definitely being very nice to me. So you could start with something like this just to see how it remembers you based on your previous conversations. And you could also do things like this. So it stores it to memory so you don't have to repeat yourself. So for example, remember my core product pitch for Skill Leap so I don't have to rewrite it every single time. This way, every time I mention Skill Leap, it just knows what it is. I don't have to, anytime I want to do any email marketing, any ad copy, any website improvement, I don't have to do that. And it says, got it, paste it here. Now I'm gonna turn on search. I'm gonna say, what is Skill Leap AI? We'll just go do a web search here and it'll pull in the information for me. I literally don't even have to type it on my own. Okay, perfect. Online learning education. I pulled it from my website, from LinkedIn. Okay, I'm gonna ask it to turn this into my core product pitch. Now it has the core product pitch. It's asking me if I wanna make it punchier or more technical because I didn't give it any kind of reference for style, but I think this is fine. Now I'm gonna tell it to remember this as my core product pitch and it will save it here to its memory. 
saved you won't have to rewrite it again just ask if you ever need it okay so this is a great great time saver and this is now in addition to referencing your old chats so if i go to the manage section here this is where it saves that type of memory where you do these kind of prompts referencing your old chat just happens by default you don't have to do anything so that is a huge improvement from how chat gpt used to work with we only had access to the save memory function. Now here's another example. I'm gonna ask it to track my marketing experiments. I do a lot of marketing experiments week to week so we could review it and then improve upon it. So I'm gonna ask it to save that. That's gonna save it to our memory here too. Now let me show you a little bit more detail about how memory works inside of ChatGPT. So the reference saved memories, these are the ones where you ask ChatGPT to remember like your name, favorite colors, some of the things I showed you so far. And then there is reference chat history, which is the big improvement I'm really excited about. ChatGPT can also use information from your past chats and make future conversations more helpful. For example, if you once said, I like Thai food, then it may take that into account the next time you ask it, what should I have for lunch? Now, the nice thing is they have independent control in the settings that I showed you. So you could turn both of them on or off or just one of them on or off. And right here, how long does ChatGPT keep saved memories? So that notepad that I showed you with your saved memories are stored separately from your chat history. So they're two separate things. That means even if you delete a chat, your saved memories from that can still be used. The saved memories are the ones with the trash can next to each one. You could also ask ChatGPT to forget a saved memory, which I showed you. And then there is this whole other way, right? Saved memories can also show up from past conversations if you want to delete references to those things, that's not stored in the memory section. You will have to clear that by deleting that individual previous chat history. So you could use the search box inside of ChatGPT, find that chat, and just delete that chat history. So for example, if I wanted to delete this one, this Ray-Ban ad that I created here with the image in, I could just go ahead and press these three dots and delete it, and it won't remember anything from our previous conversation about this, so it won't be able to pull that in in any future conversation. Now, here's another thing to keep in mind about reference chat history. Unlike saved memories, which are kept until you delete them, details from past chats can change over time as ChatGPT updates what's more helpful to remember. Because ChatGPT doesn't retain every detail from past chats, use save memory for anything you wanted to always remember. Now, does ChatGPT have a storage limit when it comes to reference chat history? No. There is no limitation on reference chat history. As long as that option is turned on in the settings, it will do its best all the time. When an old chat comes in handy in a new conversation, it will just have that context about you. So a lot of things like custom instructions are not gonna be as relevant anymore, right? A lot of the prompting techniques where you give the prompt a lot of information might not be as needed now. Now relating to privacy here, does memory remember sensitive information? A lot of times, a lot of people use ChatGPT like a therapist. Maybe those are things you don't want it to remember about you. Memories raise important privacy and safety considerations, especially around what type of information should be remembered and how that information is used. But ultimately it says, if memory is enabled, please avoid entering information you wouldn't want remembered. But for that, we always have this option, by the way, on top for temporary chats. When you use this option, it's not in the history, it doesn't train the model, and the memory is turned off. So this is a great way if you just want a quick chat that you don't want to remember, that you don't want to taint the history, or you don't want to taint the memory, just use this and then go back to your regular chat GPT by just pressing this new one and it will take you out of temporary mode. And here's a prompt I really like. Based on everything you remember about me, give me the list of 10 things I should store to saved memory. So this is gonna look into past conversations. This is gonna look into current saved memory. It's gonna look into both of those and it's gonna give me some information here. So you're a founder focused on growing a platform, onboarding instructors and testing marketing strategy. So if you think this is useful, you could store this to memory and go down this list. Anything that you think is relevant, store to memory. Anything that is not relevant, you could skip or just ask it to forget something that is already stored in memory just using the chat down here. And next week, I'm releasing a brand new ChatGPT and prompting course for 2025. So if you're a beginner to ChatGPT or if you're not getting the most out of it, this is a very beginner friendly course. It's gonna be about 20 videos. And when it comes to the essential parts of using ChatGPT, 
This should get you started. And we just rolled out a seven day free trial, which gives you access to this course right here as soon as it comes out. And it gives you access to all our courses for the same free trial and monthly subscription. And we just rolled out some new courses that's really popular. This one, AI Powered Presentation is doing really well. And this one, this Notebook LM course I released a couple months ago. This is 34 lessons. And this is all about one of my favorite AI apps of all time called Notebook LM. And in the last few weeks, there's been a ton of new updates in the world of AI. So I made a video covering the top 10 updates that got released into the top 10 AI apps. So I'll link that video here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.